these first two sections yeah. and started with that one. So, so we're trying to um, we're, we're trying to find a way to um, again clarify existing law and and anticipating uh, the changes that may be needed. The the thought is that um, as we've done in the past, you should be able to uh, repay your qualifying fee um, from from your campaign uh, campaign fund. And um, so we, we, we're just trying to clarify that. And again, that's one of those things that would be changed by 143. But the thought, as I said, is to go with existing, making these technical changes and what is existing that the commission has requested. And uh, the minority leader had a, um, a, a concern and question um, regarding the notification of the notification process. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chairman. On page seven of LC twenty eight six six two zero ERS line two thirty three, um, with uh, the chair's permission at the appropriate time, I'd like to make a motion that we amend after the word question by inserting the words was not filed or, uh, so that the sentence would read. However, if the report in question was not filed or was filed with the commission in a manner other than uh, the electronic filing. The issue here is that the way this language reads, if you file a report, then you get a response back in the manner which you file. But if you fail to file, there is no provision for how you would get notice, which creates a due process issue. So if you insert that language, was not filed, then, you're, then the um, Ethics Commission is required to use, utilize certified mail return receipt requested to notify of the late fee. And Madam Chair, Holly just pointed out too, if you go to line 273, you would need the same language? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, would you repeat that language that would need to be added? So uh, on, pay, on line 273, after the word question, you would insert the words was not filed or. So your two conditions um, would be if the report in question was not filed or was filed with the commission in a manner other than electronic filing. Because the qualifying fee here is included in ordinary and necessary. Yeah, ordinary and necessary. If it passes, then it would And all of those would then be responsible. All of those would have to be um, notified under certified mail. Okay. And so that was line 273, and the other was line? Line two, 233. Okay. And at the appropriate time, I'd be happy to offer it as a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I think we've answered the questions uh, from last week, the qualifying fees and the facsimile, and then with the minority leader's help, we've clarified uh, this issue. Um, so I feel I feel comfortable with it, with the amendments. Okay. And so I think I, the commission does as well, <laughs> since they wrote it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe you have a question. Um, Chairman Willard? And th thank you. Mr. Chairman, let me ask you and the lady with you, I'm looking back at 18 on line 12 of the bill. We're talking about ordinary and necessary expenses. I'm going to set up an example to get uh, what may be a concern about language. Uh, I have people working for me on a volunteer basis at my campaign headquarters, and they're working late, and I buy them all pizza, I buy them Cokes feed them, that type of thing. Is that going to be covered under campaign expenses? Well, as long as you're buying products at the Coca-Cola company, that's the main thing. Okay. Uh, Let's put that in there. No. <laughs> no I'm serious. Uh -huh. how, how, um, how would that be have. interpreted? So I come in with an expenditure of $250 for having done this three or four or five times during my campaign. That is currently being done by some candidates and elected officials, and it is considered an ordinary necessary expense of your campaign. And the reason I ask the question, the way you read the language here, it says ordinary and necessary expenses shall include, but shall not be limited to. Now, mm -hmm. I read that as a lawyer saying, well, it really opens up anything. It's just examples, but I can do anything I really want to that I find 
supportive of my campaign. Is that right? The experience I've had with as far as cases that have been, or complaints that have been filed with this agency in regards to what constitutes ordinary and necessary, it, it comes down, and, and, it's, and it has to do with each expenditure. I, it, it's hard to lump them all in together. I buy me but, an iPad. I buy an iPad to uh, carry around so I keep up my emails while I'm campaigning. You can consider that ordinary yeah. and necessary, but once your campaign is over, if you are elected, you cannot use that iPad in your official capacity. You can only use it for the campaign. Now, you can buy it from your campaign. Mm -hmm. Or if you are not elected and your campaign ceased to exist, again, you could buy it or you could donate it, but you can only use that iPad for your campaign. Okay. Do you all, do, have you issued in the past, I'll call it directives or rules and regulations that go through some type of definition for persons involved with campaigns of that nature? As far as what would be considered ordinary and necessary? Right. Not to my knowledge, sir, because the, the, there's such a vast volume of things that people consider ordinary and necessary. We have had cases that have been adjudicated on this issue, but to my knowledge, there's not an existing advisory opinion well, that goes through and lists every single item that could potentially be considered ordinary and necessary. And I guess I go to the point of, of course, adjudication is almost a quasi-criminal, uh, I guess, proceeding. And the fact is, you don't really have a definition of what it is, because it just says examples, but not limited to. Yes, sir. We have the statute to work off as off of mm -hmm. is all we have at this time. Okay. And, you, you know, I, I can remember volunteer appreciation gifts coming coming under this and being approved. Uh, the oh. commission has approved in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Representative Matt Ramsey. Mr. Chairman, on line 258, um, we're adding in a, a, a time frame to file this termination statement. What, is, what, is it, what does dissolution of a campaign mean on that line? The dissolution of a campaign is, is the, let me back up, the final report and termination statement cannot be filed as long as there are funds in the campaign account. So the dissolution is you've either left office or you were not successful in your bid and you have paid all the ordinary necessary expenses and you have um, dispersed what's left in the account in accordance with the statute, the final act of dissolving your campaign is to file that final report and termination statement. Right, so, so, but, so it seems like it, 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 it contemplated within the definition of dissolution of a campaign is, is uh, that could potentially be triggered to a, the day you lose an election. So you've got to do this within 10 days of losing an election? No, sir. The dissolution of a campaign, you can't dissolve your campaign as long as you have campaign funds. And you may not dissolve your, you may not disperse your campaign funds right away. The issue is if you do not disperse your campaign funds by the end of the year to file the December 31st report, you have to keep filing subsequent reports. And we do have folks that have campaign accounts that haven't been in office in 10 years, and they keep filing reports because they still have a balance. So until they dissolve, until they disperse those funds, they can't dissolve their campaign. Right, because I understand it in the context of dissolving the committee because often those are in, are legal incorporated entities, but it, it, the, it just, the dissolution of a campaign, that, that's not defined anywhere? What not to my knowledge. This was taken out of the rules, and the rules predate my tenure there. Okay. But, I mean, if, if, if it's the will of the committee to further define that, I, I think the commission would be totally fine with it. Okay. Thanks. And, and there was some confusion we, we've had with people wanting to know exactly what the deadline was, so the commission recommended this. Do we have any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess um, appreciate you, Mr. Chairman, and I guess at this time I'm, I'm ready for a motion if anyone's, or the will of the committee. What is the will of the committee at this time? Second. I have a motion and a second. What about the amendment? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I have a motion in Leader Abrams. Thank you. I, I move that we amend line 233 
by inserting the words was after the word question, insert was not filed or. Would you like for me to do this as a compound motion? Yes, please. And to do the same on line 273 after the word question, and again insert the word after the word question the words was not filed or. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have an amendment from um, Minority Leader Abrams? Second. Have a second. All those in favor of the amendment for line 233 and what was the other note? Uh, 273, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. The amendment passes, or both amendments pass, the amendment passes. So, um, so now, do we, um, all those in favor of passing LC 2866. 20 ERS or House substitute to House Bill 310. Say aye. 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 As amended, I should say. By committee substitute. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. House Bill 310 committee, committee substitute passes unanimous. <laughs> 